Good morning, world. Good morning, all nations, all people, all tongues. Good morning to every man, woman, boy, and girl living and breathing in the face of this earth. I praise God for you. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit loves every man, every woman, every boy, every girl living and breathing in the face of the earth. You are loved by God. Don't let anyone tell you you're not because you are. Today, we're talking about divorce and what the Bible has to say about divorce. So be encouraged this morning and let the word of God overtake your heart, your mind, your spirit, and your soul. And thank God. Be thankful in all things. You don't have to thank him for all things, but be thankful in all things. Matthew Chapter 19, starting at verse 3. The Pharisees, who's always trying to tempt Jesus and try to ask him hard questions, also came unto him, which is Jesus, tempting him and saying unto him, Is it lawful for a man to put away his wife for every cause? They were particular about their question. It says, for every cause. That's very important. For every cause. And he answered and said unto them, Jesus answered and said unto them, Have you not read that he which made them at the beginning made them male and female and said, for this cause, Shall a man leave father and mother and shall cleave to his wife? And they twine shall be one flesh. A man shall leave his father and his mother and cleave to his wife. And they are one flesh. A husband and wife are one flesh. Male and female, husband and wife are one flesh. This is for the body of Christ, Jesus Christ, who's living in the word. Wherefore, they are no more twine. They are no more two, just one, but one flesh. What therefore God hath joined together let no man put asunder. What God has joined together, let no man put asunder. The Pharisees asked Jesus another question. They said unto him, Why did Moses then command to give a, a writing of divorce? Why did Moses then command to give a writing of divorce? And to put her away. This is asking about every cause. He said unto them, Moses, because of the hardness of your hearts, suffer you to put away your wives. But from the beginning, it was not so. From the beginning, it was not so. You could not put away your wife for every cause. You cannot get a divorce for every cause like people are doing today in the body of Christ. And I say unto you, whosoever shall put away his wife, except there is one reason in the body of Christ why uh, when we can get a divorce. And it's in verse 9, chapter 19 verse 9 and I say unto you whosoever shall put away his wife except it be for fornication sex outside of marriage sex outside of marriage you can get a divorce and shall marry another committeth adultery and so whosoever marrieth her, which is put away, doeth commit adultery. 
Now, sometimes people are unevenly yoked when they get married. And sometimes people are not do not know the Lord Jesus Christ as their personal savior when they are married. And then they come to know the Lord Jesus Christ as their personal savior. And they may be in a very abusive relationship. God doesn't want us to be beat. He doesn't want us to be beat. God doesn't want us to be beaten. He doesn't want us to be torn down. God wants us to be raised up. His disciples, verse 10, his disciples said unto him, If the case, if the case of, a, of the man be so with his wife, it is not good to marry. But he said unto them, all men cannot receive this saying. In the body of Christ, everyone cannot receive the saying about marriage. They can't receive, everyone cannot receive it. So that's why it's so many divorces in the world and the body of Christ over any small matter, over anything. Like the Pharisees first ask uh, for every cause. There are so many divorces in the body of Christ for every cause. Not for fornication or adultery or sex outside of marriage. Sex <clears throat> outside of marriage. But for every cause. Now, right here in verse 11, Jesus is saying to them, everyone cannot receive this saying. So Jesus knows from the very beginning, that everyone won't be able to receive this saying about you only get a divorce for fornication. So I'm going to read verse 11 again. But he said unto them, all men cannot receive this saying. So Jesus already know what's happening, what's going to happen. And he know everyone is not going to receive the saying about you only get a divorce for fornication and adultery. So there is hope for us all. Everyone who's gotten a divorce, uh, other than the reason of fornication or adultery, Jesus already knows. He's already <laughs> said everyone cannot accept this. So he forgives you. He doesn't hold this against anyone. Getting a divorce, God doesn't hold this against us. He doesn't hold that against us because everyone cannot accept and receive the word of God. So if you are a person who's gotten a divorce and you feel some type of way about it, free yourself today. Let it go. Because Jesus has, he said it right here in Matthew chapter 19, verse 11. All men, women included, women, men and women cannot receive the same. So Jesus already know, he already know. Everybody can't receive the same. So it's not for you to be hung up about. It's not for you to let people try to get, try to keep you in bondage about. No. Because this is so why it's so important to read the word of God. So we can live according to the word of God. Every Everybody that, that serve God is not going to, um, cannot receive Everybody is not going to receive the words of, of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. They're not going to receive the words of God because of the thinking process, the thinking process. Some people get married because they think they're ready to get married. And once they're in the marriage, they realize they don't want to be married. So somehow, you know, they get out of the marriage. Because they didn't want the marriage. They thought they did, but they didn't. 
So don't let that be a hang up, a divorce. Don't let that be a hang up. Read the Bible every day. Read your word. I want to say also add this in. Uh, this is not about divorce. This is about prayer. Uh, a lot of Christians have been uh, walking with the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. And you've been walking with them and you're wondering why your prayers are not being answered. But the, the Jesus said, abide in me and I abide in you. And as we read the word of God, then we put the word of God in the prayer while we're waiting for God to answer the prayer. We've got to read the Bible and put the word of God in that prayer along with your faith. Because the more we come to Jesus, the more we communicate with him, the more he communicates with us. And then he began to talk to us and direct us in the process of answering that prayer. And then one day we looked up, we look up and the prayer is answered because we have uh, constantly and consistently read the word of God each and every day. Yes, each and every day. These days and times we need to read the God Bible every single day. One verse if you're not up to a chapter yet, one verse. Ask God to lead you to a church home that he would have you to go to. Not that somebody in your family is going to. Not somebody told you to go to, but who the Holy Spirit told you to go to. Ask God to know what preachers to listen to. This is so very important. Ask God to know what preachers to listen to. And then listen to them. Listen to them every day. We got cell phones now. You know, you can get the word right in the work. You can hear the word. You can get the word on a quick break on your cell phone. We can hear the word on the radio. You know, it's so many ways that we can hear the word of God these days. It's no excuse not to. Getting back to verse 11. But he said unto them, all men cannot receive this saying, save they to whom it is given. The ones that's going to receive this saying is those that it is given to. Those that it is given to. When you go into a marriage, I know um, I was married for 32 years and my husband passed away. Uh, he developed brain tumors. But in the process, uh, when we were young, and when we were in our 20s and we got married, and he said to me, my husband did, as a young man in his 20s, he said, I never want God to see me treating you wrong. I thought that was so beautiful. I've got to think the same exact way. I've got to think the same exact way. So we honor God by the way we treated one another. We decided God sees everything, he knows everything. He knows what we're doing, what we're saying when we're away from each other. He knows what we're saying and what we're doing when we were with each other. So we practice not allowing God to see us hurting one another or treating one another wrong. I had to learn to, uh, through the word of God, in my 20s, I read the Bible every single day, in my, it, all the way up until now, all the way up until now. I read the word of God because I wanted to be a better person. I wanted to be a better person. I wanted to be a better person. My mother, who was an ordained evangelist, she told us girls, she, my mom and my mother and father had 10 children, seven girls and three boys. And she told us girls, when you're ready for a husband, make a list of the characteristics that you want in the husband. Do not put anything down that you don't want in the husband, but make a list of characteristics that you do want in a husband. She said, pray over the list and give it to God. So me and one of my other sisters, we did that and put the list under our pillow. And God blessed us with husbands that we prayed for. 
and I even I even prayed because I wanted to be a better person that God if you will bless me with this husband I will serve you the way you want me to not the way I want to all the days of my life and I am continuing on in that promise that I made to God a lot of people think of don't you know, they, they don't want to be around me because I choose to do what God say do. And I don't choose the ways of the world. And I've been that way since I prayed that prayer. And God blessed me with the husband that I prayed for, that I put down on paper and prayed for. And I got every single characteristic. And God blessed me and my sister. And her and her husband is still together over 40 years. And it's wonderful. God is such a wonderful God. So again, I would like to say to those who have gotten a divorce, don't let anyone hold that over your head. Because Jesus is not holding that over your head. Jesus is not holding that against you. Jesus knows that whomever uh, went forth towards to get the divorce knew that in advance, he was, you probably as a Christian didn't even know this divorce. Some people, some Christians don't even know this section is in the Bible because a lot of Christians don't read the Bible. So I'm here to say to you, Jesus is not holding the divorce against you. He is here for you. So. God is a good God. He understands us in the human form because Jesus came in the human form to know what we go through. So this is another reason why Jesus said, everyone can't take the same. Everyone will not receive the same. And Jesus is not holding it against us. Open your Bible and read. Thank you for listening. God bless. Have a wonderful, wonderful Valentine's Day and be good to yourself today and be good to someone else.